Today we get to find out if that water block we ordered from FormulaMod.com actually fits. So if you have a similar GPU block or you just want to watch and follow along with your own, please feel free to do that. And while the theme is playing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button while you're waiting. And I'll see you guys when we get back. If you're a subscriber, I'd just like to thank you guys for returning to the channel. And don't forget, there are timestamps down below if you're just here for a particular part. There'll be links down below for everything you see here. I will find some things on our Amazon affiliate account that are the same to this GPU block, some other GPU blocks down below, the tool set, things like that. Also, there will be a link for formulamod.com where I actually purchased this. That is not affiliate link. We did not receive anything from that. I'm just putting the link down there for you guys to easily find it. If you wanna learn a little bit more about ordering through Formula Mod, the process, things like that I went through recently when I ordered a couple parts from them, I'll put a link to that video right here in the corner. So let's start off with a quick unboxing for those of you who may have not seen the previous video. We're just gonna unbox this real fast, bring out our GPU, and then I'm gonna show you how to take your GPU apart. Not every GPU is the same, but they're the same. Different, but same, same. They're all gonna have screws, they're gonna have thermal pads. Putting the blocks on for the most part are gonna be around the same-ish. Again, different, but same, same. You're still gonna need thermal pads, you're still gonna need thermal compound, you're still gonna have to apply the thermal paste the same way. Remember with a GPU that the die is fully exposed. There's no IHS. That pretty plate that says the name of the CPU on it is called an IHS, integrated heat spreader. GPUs don't have that. It's just an exposed die. So the whole die has to be covered and you gotta make sure not to put too much pressure because you can actually crack the die. If you got yourself a GPU block, more than likely you'll have screws that have springs on them. Those are for tension, to make sure you don't go too far, you get enough pressure, you don't put enough pressure. I forgot what they're called. I think they're called captive. I always forget the name of those ones. But anyways, you should have screws like that so you can better judge the pressure that's actually being applied between the cold plate and the actual GPU die. So I'll talk about that more as I'm doing it in the video. But real fast, bring you guys closer. We'll do an unboxing of this. It's just to show you what you get when you do order through formulamod.com. Now, real fast, you'll notice this extra bag that's sitting right here. This bag was separate in the brown box I actually received the products in. Both of these items came in one box, but this was actually like this and then tucked in the side. So make sure if you order the additional RGB, the ARGB, that you check the box and don't throw it away. You make sure you take everything out of that first box. So again, if you wanna know more about that, check out that video that I did on ordering through Formula Mod. But for now, let's bring you guys closer. Let's open this box up and see what you actually get in this box and the bag, if you get the bag. We also got a back plate. And please don't forget there are timestamps down below to better help jump around the video. If you're here for the unboxing, if you're here for installation, uninstallation, definitely look down in the chapters to get to where you need. So this is the baggie that was extra. Let's check it out. Here's our hub. So as you can tell, you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fans. One, two, three, four separate LEDs. This is our PC input, five volt VRGB. That's where you plug this into. This would be your power, and this would be manual control. And this is your power, it goes to Molex. I really wish the world would just stop with Molex in 2022. And here's our remote. Uh, as I said in the other video, I like the way it feels. It's The buttons are stiff. The controller's very tough, you know. Yeah, it's got flex, of course it does, but not as much as some of the cheaper ones. Like these, you may be used to. Yeah, very cheap. This one, yeah, no. Now, maybe that's due to its size, but still, the buttons feel better. You know you clicked it, where with this one, it's a guessing game. And that's everything that comes in this bag. This is what you'll receive in the mail for the most part if you order your block. You'll have some things written on the front like high quality water cooler fittings, uh, water cooling fittings. It's gonna come with two fittings because you're gonna have to block off two of the, um, the inlets and outlets, well one inlet, one outlet. So that does come with two premium chrome bike ski fittings which are pretty cool with plugs. So you could cover up the back inlet and the front outlet that way if you're going from one way to another, well, depends on how your loop is set up, but it does come with two so you can block it off when you need to. Brilliant colorful LED effects, affection, it has affection. See, nobody ever talks about affection and RGB. 
See, our color, ours is colorful, so it's affection. Easy installation. Well, yes and no. If this is your first time, you may be a little scared, but please don't be worried. I'm gonna walk you through it, even though you're probably gonna be using a different block. Just follow your instructions and pay attention to any tips or tricks I may tell you as we're going through this. Mature solution compatible with variety of casings, strong expansibility. I don't know what that means. Here's our different RGB solutions. It, it's compatible with ASUS, MSI, ASRock, Bike Ski's RGB system. And this is the Bike Ski Ice Dragon. Down here, it tells us it's a block. Cool. On the back is just some corny stuff. The exact uh, serial number for ours, 3060 Trio X. Now my GPU is not a triple fan. It's the dual axis fan, but that doesn't matter. It's still the same block. And then you're gonna have a tamper-proof seal, which isn't tamper-proof because I've already took it off a couple times and no issues, so let's just move that down. And we'll be greeted by a quality control card. Do it yourself. Well, I have nobody else to do it. I think I said that in the other video. Our back plate. This is our bag with all our goodies in it. Things we're gonna need to actually install this block on our GPU. And our GPU. How uh, epic, right? And this has a tamper-proof seal that you can tell if it was open before. Let's start with this little bag. Now you wanna be extra careful because if you notice, there's these really small little nuts. And you don't wanna lose them. I have eight, so if you drop yours, you should have about eight. It comes with a cool little Phillips screwdriver. So this will definitely fit the screw so you don't strip them. Our washers, and if you notice those screws right there have springs on them. Those are the ones I was talking about to make sure you do not over tighten the uh, cold plate to the GPU die. Some more longer screws. This is probably to actually connect the board to the GPU block. And our thermal pads. So uh, I think they're all the same size. I believe they are. Yeah, they're all the same size. So these are cut to fit. You gotta cut it yourself. So there's no instructions if you didn't notice. You go online to the website, type yours in, and the instructions are pretty simple from there on out. But you could just watch this video if you have the same block, but you gotta cut these yourself. And I think these are 0.5 millimeter thickness. Make sure that if for some reason you don't have these, you order the same size thickness. You don't wanna run the chance where you're not actually getting good pressure between the cold plate and say your VRMs or your choke or your VRMs because then they'll overheat and yeah, you don't want that. And our back plate. And there's your back plate. It says the name of the company. The, I don't like this part where it says all this. It literally could have went without that. So I believe this is used for uh, re removing heat. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And our GPU. Again, it has this tamper proof seal. And here's our block. So if you plug this straight in, it'll just start lighting up rainbow effect. This is why we got the accessory bag so we could change that. And these are the uh, premium fitting plugs that it comes with. They are chrome. And it does say in and out. So you know this is your in, this is your out. Then you notice in the middle you got your fin stack and then you have a gasket going around the inside. And if you notice right here, we have three major screws going straight down also it has two gaskets underneath each of those and then our cold plate on the back as you could tell this is what's going to be touching our gpu die this is going to be touching our vrms this will be touching the memory so yeah it's a pretty big piece of metal and it's very heavy by the way so if you're one of those people in the camp where heftiness is quality then you're really going to think this is major quality now bike ski themselves i do believe they're a good brand so yeah I'm good with them. But it does come with the two plugs, which is very good to have. A lot of people forget to get extra plugs for their uh, water cooling setup. I'm always saying get as many plugs as you can. Try and pick up like six to eight of them. You can never have enough. So this is everything you should receive when you order it. But the baggie with the fan hub and the remote, those are sold separately. I think they're sold separately. I, I just remember clicking the button saying add that and it did it. I don't think it charged me anything. If it did, it probably couldn't have been more than 10 bucks. But again, go check out the formula mod video I did. It'll have a lot more explanation there when ordering. So now what we're gonna do is bring out our graphics card and get started to actually tear down our GPU. Again, guys, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share these videos with your friends. We really do appreciate it. 
Okay, so it's preparation time. These are things I like to do before I actually start working on my GPU. I like to make sure my GPU is as safe as possible. So you see this right here? This is what actually plugs into your PCI Express slot on your motherboard. So I don't like leaving it exposed like this. If you purchased your GPU brand new, you should have something that actually covers that up and it'll look like this. So sometimes on the inside, you pay attention, they might have a little blocked out area. That's for this part of the teeth. So just check it make sure if it's straight through or not and then put it on your graphics card just to keep it safe see now we don't have to worry about the teeth actually getting hurt next you want a good work surface that's anti-static safe now yes a lot of parts are esd safe nowadays well actually for a long time now but still Try to make sure you're working on a good ESD safe surface. I have the Gamers Nexus Mod Mat. This is ESD safe. It's actually grounded to my uh, outlet in my home. Another cool thing about it, it was signed by Steve. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> my wife ordered this for me for Christmas and she didn't even know they came signed. She picked this one by mistake which is pretty cool because she got it signed. I had an all blue one that I bought from Micro Center. It was just a basic standard. I think it was like 20, 30 bucks. You can order those on Amazon. Again, everything in this video will be linked down below. I do recommend if you plan on doing work like this, definitely get an ESD mat. A lot of ESD mats will also have this, this little plug right here. So this end will go down and plug into your outlet. The screw right in the middle of your outlet, you unscrew that, you take the little hook, you put it in between, screw your outlet back, and that will put this to ground. So make sure your outlet's even grounded. If you live in an older home, check your, uh, always check your outlets number one in your home, making sure they're all grounded. And then anything coming out of your ports will be grounded. You still don't wanna take the chance, even though some of this stuff is ESD safe. Well, it's all got cool extra protections, but always make sure to have a good working surface that you will not damage any of your parts due to something stupid like ESD. Because I think if you've been doing this for a while, You've done it once or twice like I have already. Some type of tool set. Depending if this is gonna be the only time you do this or if you plan to do this a lot. If you plan to do this a lot, I highly recommend I fix it. All their tools are ESD safe. So you don't even have to worry about your tool set. You have an ESD safe mat, you have ESD uh, bracelets, and you have ESD tools. Another good thing you could add is a uh, air humidifier in your room. That really would help get rid of uh, ESD charge in the air. Please do not get the ESD bracelets that are wireless. Think about it, the word ground. Let's just take the word at face value. If it's wireless, it can't be ground. What did it ground to? The magical uh, ground in the air? Well, air's got a charge in it automatically. Um, molecules, atoms, neutrons, you know, those things spinning with a little electricity. So no, no, no. This needs to be plugged into ground. Those are just a few things I like to make sure I have before I actually start working on any of my PC components or, well, anybody else's for that matter. If you have an iFixit case, when you open it to get to your bits, you'll see this tray, you see the little squares? This is so you could put screws in say one little square, two little squares. It's like a little organization tray. So if you don't have a, a magnetic tray, you can use that. If you look on your mod mat, if you own one, you'll notice it resembles a GPU. Lines up perfectly. So if we took out these two screws, we would put the screws here. So this is a way of making sure you don't forget where you put your screws. So you can put all your screws here, snap a picture of it before you take it apart, take a picture of it with the screws here. This way you remember where all your screws went if you're not recording well like I am. So let's get ready and let's do this. You're gonna notice you may have a sticker on one of your screws saying void if tampered with. So yeah, that's actually illegal in the United States, but you know, whatever. Don't worry about that, take it off. They can go jump off of a cliff. Don't worry about that. You're about to put a water block on your GPU anyways. Don't sweat it. So let's start with the outer screws because these screws in the middle, these are actually holding the cooler, the fin stack, 
to the board itself. So let's try to take off just this back plate. Once you have all the screws you could take out, taken out from here, now we're going to work on these four. Just real fast, I gotta say a quick disclaimer. You take full responsibility for taking your own GPU apart. If I break my GPU, well, I broke my GPU. So remember, you're taking full responsibility for your GPU. Okay, let's move forward. These four screws are the main screws holding the pressure from the cold plate to the GPU die. So when you remove these, I do not want you to be going in a clockwise manner, and I do not want you to go until they're fully out. So we're gonna do a few turns on each one to evenly take pressure off. If we go and just take one out all the way, we're putting a lot of pressure on these three screws that's gonna actually could cause damage to your GPU die. So let's do a few screws, few screws, few, few, few in opposing directions until it actually is removed. So you see this little one right here? If you're really worried about it, take a heat gun to it and put it somewhere safe because you can actually take it off if you really try nice and neat. So here, let's see if we can do it. Let's get a brown there, a little voided sticker. You don't have to, guys. Well, there you go. Minimal damage to the sticker, actually. Let's start. We're gonna throw a screwdriver in, break it, move to the next one, break it, and we're gonna break them, and that's it. Now, we're gonna do a fuse on screws. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. And we're gonna do that around real fast until we get screws all the way out. That's one. And now if you notice, all the screws I removed are pretty much in the same spot as this is. You could take a marker and a piece of paper and do the same thing. Now with those screws removed, pay attention to anything that's connected through a header, like your fans and your RGB. You're gonna wanna disconnect these. You could try and do that now or after we remove the uh, PCB from the cooling. So you could take one of these and try to get in there and just slowly that one out you don't want to pull from the wire you could tear the wire out of the socket I'm just putting it in between the edges and jiggling up like left and right just like that now those wires are removed let's check the other side we got a couple more right there so let's remove those Disconnected. Disconnected. But even though we removed those, we're still going to take our time when taking this off. So what I want you to do is, remember, thermal paste is right now between the cold plate and the GPU die. So it's going to be kind of glued, and plus you have thermal pads holding up against the uh, VRMs and the memory. So you may have to put a little bit of tension, but I want you to do like a come off the edge and kind of like pull up here up here and just slowly start pulling now remember this is the PCB right here not the black now try to get a grip on both and wiggle and wiggle and pull up and put some pressure on the edges and kept doing that until you get a pop see eventually it'll just come loose and slowly after you get it to pop I want you to bring it back like this and slowly bring it up and look if there's any wires. If you see no wires, you can freely remove it. Now here's our thermal paste application. We could see now that's what was holding our GPU together. I'll tell you the truth, it looked like a pretty decent spread. I don't like how that looks right there. That part 
you see there was hardly any there. This is a newer card, so the paste is still wet. But now what we need to do is clean all this off. So set all this up the way you need to, and let's get this thing cleaned up. So now let's get to that. And now you'll be left with your PCB and your cooling solution. So look how thick some of these are. Look at that. And this is for our memory. This is for our VRMs. This is for our chokes. So yeah, well, for your power delivery, your memory. This is for the GPU die in the middle. So you could keep your backplate if you want. If you don't want to add the new backplate, I'm pretty sure there shouldn't be an issue with that. So if you like your backplate better, I, I kind of do like mine's better, but we'll see. But what we need to do now is clean and storage. So you're gonna wanna store this somewhere safe. You don't want these pads to get damaged. So, and the fin stacks, you don't want these to get bent or tweaked. You don't want the fans to get damaged. So a good place to put this is in its original packaging. If you have your original box, definitely put it there. If not, put this somewhere safe. Some of our kids or animals or somebody's not gonna get to it and cause damage. A lot of people like to take this and put this above their PC as a little showcase, like they have an extra GPU that they don't use because you know, they're rich and cool. So yeah, just make sure to put somewhere safe. Now let's clean off the uh, thermal paste and let's clean off any residual leftover from these thermal pads. Now we need to clean off the thermal compound. What you're gonna need is some isopropic alcohol. 91% uh, is preferred, but you know, as long as it's rubbing alcohol, you'll be good to go. Also, they sell pads that is for cleaning thermal paste. It's like a two-part mixture. I've never used it. So yeah, I mean, some coolers come with it. Some thermal compound come with it. I've also used the alcohol swabs that come from hospitals. So if you have like a first aid kit, you can use those. So what you wanna make sure also is that you have some type of coffee filter or blue shop towel, maybe an old t-shirt with a clean spot, but you do not wanna use regular old kitchen paper, the white paper. It makes too much lint, that little white stuff. And I believe that stuff is conducted. So you don't really want that. If you do use it, just know you should blow off all your components after you're done cleaning. Cause again, you don't want that little stuff everywhere. So take your coffee filter or whatever. And you want to go first time dry. So we're going to practice right here first and just clean it up. And be very careful coming up with it because it's really stringy and it could get all over the place. We're trying to get as much as the thick of the thermal compound off. Try not to get none on your clothes or your fingers because it's very hard to get off. Use alcohol though, it'll help take it off. Take your alcohol. I usually like it on a spray bottle because I'll clean my entire PCBs with it. That's right, you can use isopropyl alcohol to clean electronic components as long as they're turned off uh, because this stuff just dries up in seconds. So it's not like water. It'll take forever to dry. Get some al alcohol on whatever you're gonna be using and little circle motions. And for the most part, it's clean, but we're gonna do that until it's really, really clean. And there you have it, nice and clean. You can do it a few times if you like. Now let's get to our main GPU die. You can spray it straight on the die or you can just spray it on your napkin. But again, we're gonna go dry first. And you wanna get it all off. You wanna get like as much as you can off. You do not wanna leave any of it. And it's just not good using two different types of thermal picks. Now, once you actually get your GPU die pretty clean, you can do the edges, try to get those little components there as best as you can. Sometimes I'll just spray the alcohol on top of those little components. I'll let it sit for a moment, maybe count to three or four or five, and just start wiping away. Then I'm gonna look at the edges, like down there. Just be gentle on it and make sure the die is nice and 
shiny and reflective. You're gonna see the memory chips right here. They're gonna have some residual left over from these thermal pads right here. Feel free to clean those too. You can just, again, spray your rag, whatever you're gonna use. And then just go on top of them and go in circles. Get as much of it as you can off. And then once you're satisfied with that, you can also clean the top of the chokes. You may notice they're wet looking. That's just sweat from the thermal pads and these getting really hot. So yeah, you can clean those too with some alcohol. It's not gonna hurt nothing. Just do not put a lot of pressure. You do not wanna mess up the solder on the other, the soldering of it or whatever. So just give it a nice good once over to get that sweat off of it. And once you're done, you're happy with the way you've cleaned it. You've cleaned in between here, on here. You've cleaned everything you wanted. You're going to want to blow this off because no matter what, you're always going to get lint one way or another. So just. Or if you got some compressed air, which is even better, use the compressed air. I use this. It's 20 bucks at Walmart. I'll put a something similar like it down in the link below to Amazon. It's a balloon pump. It, doesn't blow too hard so it won't really hurt your components just don't go this close to it try to stay about six seven and eight inches away when blowing it off so yeah get that cleaned off as nice as you can don't put a lot of pressure though guys please do not put a lot of pressure just enough to clean it off and then blow it off and then as soon as you're done doing that and you're happy with that we'll move on to the next thing oh and real fast these do not have to be perfect there's always going to be residual leftover thermal compound on these unless you get this right here and then like take a piece off of here like that and this has alcohol on it right now and then you go like in between them like this and i've actually been able to get all of this stuff off before when i was bored but this is dangerous you're really starting to get in between these really small components so do it lightly if you like but don't overdo it so i'm going to finish cleaning my board off and then we're going to come back and we're going to start prepping our new gpu block so when you're done your card should look something like this now you may find over here you may find some sweat on here also again those from those thermal pads that gray stuff if you really want to get in there take yourself some of that coffee filter rip it up ball it up Get some tweezers, then get some alcohol on here, and then you could slowly get in there and get all the crud that was on those. So I cleaned all of those, all of these, and these, and all the memory chips. So you'll be able to see your die. It's a GA-104, 202A1, for those of you interested in that. All right, now that everything is clean to your satisfaction, let's move on to the next part. So let's get the rest of this off because we need to be just down to our PCB. So we have some screws here, but I'm gonna start right here. Let's get this thing off first. So we have some screws right there. Let's take those out. This would be like an anti-sag bracket. Pretty cool on MSI to put something like that. This card's not a, a three fan card. It's not really heavy. It's got weight to it, but still adding this connected here would really help with sag. And it's actually got a thermal pad right here to keep this chip cool, I presume. Yeah, it's to keep that chip cool right here. All right, now we got that off. Let's get this off. I just like to get everything down to zero and then start putting it all back together. You probably don't have to, but still, I just, again, since we're putting a whole new block on, let's just get this down to straight PCB. Let's see what we're in store for. I'm not sure if you can tell. Those are different sizes. So try not to mix your screws up. I'm gonna keep those next to that plate over there, the, jack, the side bracket. So again, try to keep everything in a way you'll remember it. Take pictures, you know, put the screws next to what they belong to and then take a picture of it so you know what goes where. Sometimes you're able to put screws back if you can. Just screw them back into where they came out from. That way you know those belong there. Now I know these screws belong right there and it's easy, it's simple. All right, with that stuff a little bit better organized. 
Let's finish taking out the remaining screws. Once those four screws come out, this could be removed. And we have some thermal pads back here, keeping all this nice and cool. So the back plate's an active back plate. It actually does something. I mean, this is plastic and this is metal-ish. It's got some pads over here. So again, I'm gonna put my screws back where I got them from. This way I don't lose them. I might end up reusing these on the new back plate because I did not see any on the new back plate. So obviously MSI thought it's a good idea to have these. Here's your uh, plain PCB down to, well, down to nothing. Everything right here, this is your whole board. Okay, so now like I said before, you wanna put this stuff somewhere safe. So if you want to put it all back together, that's what I'm probably gonna do. But first I'm gonna make sure if I need these or not before I actually put myself through all that and come into it. So put this stuff somewhere safe for now, have your PCB out and get your new GPU block ready because, well, we're ready to put our GPU block on. All right, so get all your stuff ready, everything that came with your GPU, your new spring-loaded screws, washers, these new screws, your screwdriver if you need it, your thermal pads, which you will definitely be needing, your new backplate, and your GPU block. Now, before going forward, the conductives, the chokes right here, they do not need a heat pad. At least that's what it says when I look it up. That's what they're saying that they do not need it. So we just need to put our new pads on top of the, uh, the MOSFETs right down here on our memory chips right here. And then over here on our other MOSFETs on this side. So let's get those applied. Again, you need to cut these yourself. So I have a pair of scissors ready. The pads will have a plastic on both sides. So cut first, then remove the plastic. Don't remove the plastic and then cut. So see how big of a piece you need. I will go a little bit more, but be careful. There's a screw, screw hole here. We'll go from here where you see that there was supposed to be another phase. So let's where the other choke would be, the other MOSFET would be. So from there, let's go all the way down and stop right about here. So that's our cut we're gonna need. So I would just place mine on the side right up here. All right, that's about my length. Get our scissors. Right about there to right about there. Now what we're gonna do is remove the plastic. And remember you have plastic on both sides. And try to handle this stuff gently. And let's lay it down from the top of there. And it's still kind of wide. So I'm gonna squeeze these together. And then I'm going to slowly pat it down in there. So you can see I, I uh, covered up the screw hole here. So I'm gonna grab this and try to bring it out. And I've got to bring it out again. Now I'm pushing along the edges here. So I kind of want to tuck it under just a little bit, just to make sure they're sitting flush here. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna push down a little bit like this, just to make sure they're touching the MOSFETs. Now, you can trim it up if you want, if you don't like how long they are. So close to the screw holes, that's up to you. What I could do is just push them back just a little bit. So we could just do a little baby cut right here. Yeah, it cuts pretty easily. So I said don't be, I, that's why I said be gentle. And now we cleared the orange. All right, that's our first pad on, congratulations. Now we just need to put on top of our memory and then over here. I always say do the long cuts first. This one right here would be pretty long. Let's cut that one. So we'll say right about from there, about there. Once you have it where you want, just give it a good little pat down. But just make sure they're covered like that. And we have a few more to do, so let's get those done.
So you should be looking something like this. Cover it up all these right down here. I'm gonna push down a little bit, give it a little mushy. I'm gonna do the same here. Completely covering the memory chips. If you go over, that's fine. Just try to stay out of the screw hole areas. So we have a couple more areas. You can make it one piece going straight across if you like. Totally your choice at this point. In the end, yours should look like this, right here. All right, so let's get our block out. I'm gonna remove these plugs. Also, if you don't care for this uh, LED strip right here, these two screws will remove it. I'm going to do that right now. More or less just to keep that wire out of my face. All right, so just like that, remove that big LED strip. Weird sticker. Right there, we're gonna remove that sticker. I don't know why that got there. How that got there? No, I ripped it. All right, once you get all this junk taken off, that shouldn't be there. You may have put fingerprints all over this. Let's get that cleaned up. And just get it clean whether you put fingerprints on there or not. So we're getting everything nice and clean to make sure we get some good contact between our thermal pads, our thermal grease. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Fingerprints removed. And we're gonna blow all those little particles right off. So go use some compressed air or a balloon pump, whatever you're gonna use, like whatever, and just get the cleaned up, get all that particle stuff off. And then let's get back to finishing this up. Our new back plate, let's make sure the back is cleaned also. And at this point, we need to put thermal compound on top of our die right here. So just remember, the entire die needs to be coated. You cannot leave any of it uncoated. This does not have IHS on it like a CPU does. So we need to cover the whole thing. So a credit card or some type of spatula to spread it around. You want it on, you know, thin, but enough to where you cannot see any silver. So let's do that now. Whenever it comes to my water cooling parts, I always use Thermal Grizzly. I have this little spatula thing. I, it came with one of my thermal paste things. I think it came with the Corsair MX TX, I don't remember. But a credit card, uh, anything, so you could just do one of those. What I like to do is make me a straight line near an edge, not exactly in the center. I like to come straight down with it. And then just kind of go up against the die just to make sure I don't leave any and then pull back just a little bit on the plunger to make sure I don't waste it or it gets anywhere. But unless we need more, let's put our cover back on, our thermal paste, and let's start spreading. So you should not be able to see any silver at all. The entire die is coated. Now pay attention to where your power connections are right here. If you look on your back plate, you're gonna see a notch. Should line up with your power connections. Your bolts should all line up with the holes on the PCB. Just like so. And you would bolt it in. But I'm gonna take it a step further. This is metal, so I'm gonna add these to here. So if you wanna do that, follow along. If not, skip ahead. I'm trying to get them off without damaging them, so. There's our first one. And be careful, don't forget, you have thermal paste and things on this side. So if you're doing this, try to be gentle as possible. Now I'm going with these ones because the back plate has a raised legging. Like, look, see how those are raised? And look at the original back plate. They're raised about the same if you take in consistency that this is thicker than this one. So this should work out really well. Again, paying attention to the power right here and the notch on the back plate and making sure the raised sides are going on here like so i'm gonna rest it on top to see if it's too bad of a gap with those i mean no i think that's perfect because those are touching where they're supposed to touch yeah 
I like it. Make sure we didn't move them around. No, they look pretty good to me. Place it on. Once it's on, let's do a flip. All right. And I'm going to place these on here where it left the grease spot. Do the same thing. Wherever you see the grease spot that was left from these pads, place those. Let me see if I can get this one to stick to the back of the Jeep here. This one was sticking better anyways. I'll just leave this one on here. You can see a good grease spot on there. Okay. This one sticks, so that one's good. These just left a better spot where I could put the grease. Right, let's put that to the side. Ah. So now that we got our pads the way we want, everything is nice and clean looking, good looking. It's time to actually... It's time to actually put our back plate on. Yeah. Now, our back plate is going to go on a little bit different because you're gonna be missing pieces that go to it, like this piece which is kind of a, uh, a GPU sag bracket, and it has a cooling thermal pad right here for a chip on the board. I think it's a shunt resistor, but it should be fine. If you're like me and you don't mind grinding your stuff down, then you should have no problem. So if you don't mind grinding and grinding, then yeah, you can actually get this back on. So pay attention to which slots your HDMI, which one's your display ports. Let's take a good look here line it up like okay it goes there then these tabs will go on the bottom of the board so like that so you get a good line up and then just put it down and get your screws and just snug you don't want to chip the board just snug and now you got your rear io placed on now we're going to take our gpu block right here the water block and we're going to pay attention how this goes right here this is our pcie slot right here on our block here's the inlet outlet so pcie slot right here here this and our connection would go something like that right there see how it lines up you have that deep crevice right here for all these you got the other crevice for here you can see this part's not as long as this part so that's for the two memory sticks on the bottom and the top one's for the three. So the middle point right there is for our GPU block. So let's bring it down as evenly as possible. Your screw holes on the back should line up. So make sure all your holes are lining up. So once those are nice and lined up, now you're going to want to locate some of these screws, the ones with the springs on them, and, and then these are the gaskets. So you're going to place a gasket over each one of these And remember, these are the four screw holes that hold the GPU die down against the cold plate. Now we got those four, we're gonna have these. Now, remember how we removed them? Doing just a few turns and going opposing screws, not going clockwise. We're gonna do the same thing here, even when we tighten it. Only a few turns each going diagonally. We wanna apply even pressure across the entire die. So let's put our first screw here. We're going to press down because this is spring and we're going to go till it catches thread. Oh, stop. Uh, mine's actually flew off just now. So let's make sure it's actually on. Actually threaded. All right. Not tightening it, just threading it. And we're going in at opposing angles. And we're not going tight. We're just making sure it's threaded. Now, once they're in, we're sure they're threaded. Now, we're gonna go one turn each. One, 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 one. And we're just gonna keep doing this, going diagonally until these screws come to a stop. Yeah, I like that one. That one came to a good solid stop. That one's good. That one's good. We're just gonna check them one more time. We do not want to crack the die. 
Very possible. They came to a good snug stop. I'm happy with that. And right now, our block is on. You are right now, you are done. You could literally plug this in your machine and start using it. But, nope, we have a back plate to put on. We're gonna put some screws back now. Not all screws, because some screws are gonna be for our back plate. So you're gonna pay attention. You're gonna see where you can actually screw something in where it's threaded. But you wanna make sure you're not screwing all of those in. If you look at your back plate, you're gonna see five outer screw holes or however many you see on yours. So you're not gonna wanna uh, screw those. You're gonna screw the uh, ones on the inside. So just leave this here as a reference and you're like, okay, yeah, I don't wanna do that one. I don't wanna do that one. I want to do this one. You know, just make sure you don't use the ones that are for your, your back plate. These are the same screws that came out of the bag with the spring screws. I think these are M2 screws right here. And we're going to put them where they belong. And just to go to their snug. That's it, guys. Just snug. Do not go like super strong and all that. And try not to go in a perfect circle either. Try to go diagonal. So let's see, is there another one we could put? No, it doesn't look like it. All right, so I guess we are going like this. All right. So I believe these two screws are for like the pressure for the chokes and the, uh, the MOSFETs. So let's just make sure they're snug. And that's it. They give you a lot of these screws, by the way. You're gonna have a lot of these, uh, I guess, cool. So that's how many extra washers and spring screws and other screws I have left from this bag. So let's take these things right here and let's place them where they need to be placed. Let's take our back plate and we're gonna bring our back plate as straight down as possible, making sure all these screw holes line up as we're coming down. All right, once it's down, just press down where the thermal pads are. This baggie, we're gonna have just these longer screws. So let's take those out. And these are for our back plate. Check them out. So let's start dropping them in. And we just wanna get them threaded. And they give you more than enough even here. So let's go at another angle because we still have pads underneath this one too. Just go until we know caught thread. That's it. Once it caught thread, we stop. All right, now we know they caught thread. Let's go to the stop. 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 And then, you know, snug. We're not going to, like, we break something here. Just go to the stops and then a little bit more for snug. Okay. Now let's take these leftover screws and put these back in their bag. We don't want to lose anything because you never know. Okay. Now... We got our front, check that out. And our back plate, check that out. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And that's your GPU block installed. Really and truly not that hard of a process. Again, if you didn't have the same exact block, you still could kind of follow along. Just paying attention to where I was putting my thermal pads. If you bring up the instructions to the one you're looking at, this is still a video you should be able to get a little bit of tips and tricks from as you're installing your water block onto your GPU. Now. This piece, the GPU bracket, the SAG bracket, it has a cooling pad right here, a thermal pad right here. And again, I believe that is for the um, the shunt resistor. Now, again, I'll put it up here if it is or isn't. I'm 99% sure that is the shunt resistor. There is a way to get this on. Now, it's gonna require a little bit of dremeling and this thing is kind of thick, but it shouldn't be too bad to get through. If you're interested in actually still installing this, well, keep watching this video because that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take a Dremel to this and line it up right and just try to make it look as clean as possible. Because not just that, I do want this on there because it will help with a little bit of the extra weight on this because that CNC metal piece is kind of heavy. So this will help with the weight. Now, quick disclaimer, we're gonna be grinding and cutting and you'll still be able to put this on if you decide to go back to the original cooling method, the fan system with the fin stacks and all that stuff. But you will not be able to put one of the screws in, at least one of the screws that will hold this to the PCB. So you're only gonna have the outside one. So if you're willing to take a Dremel or a grinder to this and actually follow along, then definitely keep watching the video. And for those of you who are like, I'm done, I'm plugging this thing in my loop, this is more than enough, this is what I wanted, thank you Joe. Well, 
you're welcome. I really hope this video helped you guys. So before you leave, why don't you think about hitting the subscribe button? We really could use it. I believe it's like not even 1% of people who watch these videos are subscribed. If you guys would all subscribe, that would really make a very large difference in the way the channel actually starts to grow. So please hit the subscribe button hit the like button down below in the description. I will have ways you could help. Thank you to all of you out there who watched this video up until this point. I hope you have a good one and I will see you guys on the next videos. Now, for those of you who stuck around to actually install this bracket, well, we're gonna get to that right now. So you wanna cut this thing to actually make it fit. Quick disclaimer, you damage something, it's on you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna try and prep you the best I can tell you the things you may need, things you're going to need, and I'm gonna touch on do you really need it? No, I'll just do it real fast for you. No, you do not need this. There's no reason for it besides the weight that it had with the two fans on there with that really thick fin stack, that really overkill cooling solution that MSI put on this 3060 Ti. This was a, a brace, basically a GPU side bracket. That's what it is. It also has that thermal pad to help move heat from the shunt resistor. I'm pretty darn sure it is a shunt resistor. If you're the kind of person that doesn't mind taking a grinder to your stuff, well then yeah, follow along. Let's get this thing grinded down, man. It's just a piece of metal. But remember, if you decide to put the original cooler back on, you will not be able to put one of these screws back in. You'll still be able to put the last screw and those two screws, but not this screw closest to the uh, the inside of the graphics card or the IO shoe. What we're going to need, you're gonna need your piece, gloves, if you are not using gloves, then seriously, you're sick. If this thing jumps, it's still probably gonna go through the glove, but if anything, it's gonna save you a few layers, if not your fingers for that point. We're not trying to lose a finger, but let's take some precautions. Safety first, then teamwork, guys. Remember that. Some type of goggles or glasses. I'll be using these. I do own a real pair of work goggles. I just can never seem to find them when I need them. But I promise you, whenever I'm gonna be sitting here drawing a picture or something, I'll find the goggles, but I won't be able to find these. So, something to protect your eyes. Yeah, so we can actually do it without taking off the top. So just our back plate. So I'll probably just leave this in at this point. So we just need to remove our back plate. So we got our gloves, we got a grinding solution. So a Dremel, you can use a Dremel. It just may take a little bit longer because this thing is a little bit thick and either a vice grip, uh, something like this. So you can actually lock it down and it won't just fly when you're hitting it with the grinder. Cause if you're sitting there like this with the grinder, this can will just take off and it could stick in the wall or stick in your head. So you want something that's gonna hold it somewhere in place. Get your stuff ready. And then we're going to mark where we need to cut. So again, if you do this and you decide to put the cooler back on the original one, you'll, you'll be missing this piece. So it'll lose a little bit of its uh, strength, I guess, but Still, all in all, it'll have the furthest screw into the board to help, you know, hold it nice and steady. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove my back plate and then I'm going to line this up and I'm going to mark this with some uh, masking tape to see where my cuts need to go. So let's get this thing removed and start finding our cuts. And with that, our back plate just come right off. And there's our pads we had stuck on. Uh, that side of the pad seems to be sticky, so you can just leave those alone. We're now gonna wanna put this somewhere, you know, far away. If you put the screws back like I did, not to lose them, remove them now. All right, now that we have our screws removed, let's pay attention back to this to see where this goes. So you'll see the back screw will go there. It lines up with that hole, and that one's supposed to line up with that hole. But we don't have that right now, so let's uh, start finding our cut. So I'm going to be using masking tape. You could use a marker or whatever you like. And make your line like that, so you know where you're cutting. So since this has those little holes right here, I'm probably gonna cut up right to that first hole. I'm gonna line it up with that hole right 
there. And I'm gonna cut from here straight back to that hole. And then I'm gonna cut from here and just remove this piece completely. So now you need to get rid of this, put it back inside of an ESD safe bag and chuck it in a box, get it far from here. You don't want any components around because you're gonna have metal shards flying everywhere. And uh, yeah, let's get to cutting. Before you plug in whatever you're using, grinder, uh, whatever you're gonna be using, make sure it's in the off position. You're gonna see a one and a zero as usual. Zero is off, one is on. Make sure you use your locking uh, vice grip like this and use it really tight. You wanna lock it down. To make sure this thing cannot go anywhere. If you have two, use two. So I'm gonna get my gloves on now some type of eye protection these aren't the best Let's try to get the goggles get your grinder and make sure you hold it good and safe like this while you're doing this because you do not want to get hurt try to get a good angle on it you do not need to go all the way the first shot you can go little by little keep checking seeing how far down you went look i went into my table because i wasn't paying attention but it looks like our first cut was a good cut yeah, that was a good cut. It went straight down. So now we need to come from here in this line and that should finish it, all right? And you seen those sparks? Very dangerous, so have nothing flammable in the direction the sparks are gonna be flying. Well, don't have anything flammable around you. Now we find yourself getting very close, you wanna stop because you don't want this thing flinging out the piece you're cutting. So it's a nasty cut because I'm not doing this in the proper area like I'm used to. Yeah, excuse me, right? But now we got a good, you know, ugly slice going on there. So this thing should just come right out. And now we have our cut. Also, if you're not wearing gloves right now, you'll be screaming because this thing is very hot. So you see we've got some ugly edges now because my cut was not clean. If you have a Dremel at this point, you're gonna wanna put one of the sanding things on there and clean this up. And if you got some black, spray some black on here. So you get rid of that ugly chrome looking, or if you like the chrome, chrome it out. I'm, I got chrome paint, I might use that. But still, all in all, now we got that cut done. We, we know now we're pretty good there. We don't have to worry about it hitting there. So now this is slide in and just this piece could get screwed in. So just clean up your edges now. I'm gonna go find my Dremel and I'm gonna do just that. So yeah, now what we're gonna do is get our Dremel out, get us on a good sanding disc and try to clean up those rough edges. Again, make sure your Dremel is in the off position, which is zero before plugging it in. Gloves, some type of eye protection. Get something to clean off the metal with. So let's put this on. We're gonna start off in the slowest setting, which is one if you have a variable rate one that you change speed. And then speed it up. And as always, have something holding this. Then we're gonna check our piece. Remember, this thing is gonna be blazing hot. Check our piece. Looks like we got some nice smooth edges now. Rounded off any points. So now what you could do is if you're planning to paint this, uh, go a little further than you plan to paint it. So take your Dremel, I'll put it on the low setting, just to show you guys. And just go a little further than you plan. And just, yeah. And now you can paint it. Because if it's not sanded, the paint will have nothing to bite to. Get yourself some paint, paint your part. And then when you come back, We'll set up our second, uh, putting this actually in. Looks like I lost the uh, thermal pad that was on here. Yeah, I'll put an annotation that you need to remove that before doing this, because mine's came off. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it was right here. So mine's came off, I'll put an annotation. So get your piece painted, and when you come back, I want you to clean off your entire area, because what you just did, you put metal flakes everywhere when you did this. And you're gonna be bringing that graphics card back here. So definitely, definitely clean off this entire area. Get a vacuum, get a broom, get a brush, get a magnet if you have to. So at this point, you've either decided to paint that bracket or not to paint that bracket. I really hope yours came out better than mine's did. For some reason, I had some type of chemical reaction to mine's right here. And the weird thing is just right there. I cleaned it off with alcohol, uh, I primered it, and then I painted it. Weird thing is the rest of it came out great, inside and out. I mean, if you have a problem with yours, get some stickers. 
uh, do something, cover it up. I don't know, Bondo. I don't know, no, don't use Bondo. Inside of a computer, yeah, do not use Bondo. That smell will never go away. But yeah, use some stickers if you have to. Uh, again, you're not gonna be able to see it in my build. So I'm really not gonna care too much about it. Maybe I'll throw a sticker on it, we'll see. But at this point, you've done what you're gonna be doing. Now, let's actually put ourselves a thermal pad on here because mine's came off. So if you if you still have your original one, you took it off, put it to the side like a sane person should have, God knows what meme went there, then we're gonna have to use one of the thermal pads that came with our GPU block. So let's do that right now. So again, making sure you are grounded because you're gonna be touchy touchy, but try to hold it from the edges, you know, wherever you can. Don't put too much pressure here because this is a separate piece. That's why it's screwed in. Now you're supposed to screw it from the inside out, but I'm pretty sure we could do it from this side back. So yeah, it'll kind of line up with that screw. Now you wanna go in straight. If you're going in at an angle with the screw, and you start digging into the PCB because you can't go straight down, you can make a problem. You can hit a trace and they're all over here and short out your GPU. So if you cannot get it there nice and clean and straight, just put your back plate back on and call it a night because you do not want to make an issue over this piece. Again, the shunt resistor should be fine, but I'm just doing this because well, I want to put it on just because I'm crazy like that. And somebody out there might actually want to do this. So yeah. The piece I'm talking about exactly is right there. See if I can get you guys a better view of it. Right over there. So making sure the thermal pad you have, you took off the plastic off of both sides of it. We'll try to sneak it in there as best as we can and get something to press down on it. You want to use something ESD safe, guys. I'm going to be using something from my iFixit set, so. I'll take a screwdriver like this. Try to strain it out on top of the thingy. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier to do this with the top piece off. So then what I'm going to do is place this on top like so. And try to hold pressure because I do not want the uh, that piece to flip flop everywhere. Have your screw ready. And you just want to go till it's snug, then stop. You do not want a lot of pressure. Look, it's not going anywhere. It, it's there. The problem is though, is actually getting it back on here. If you want it, you won't be able to. See, it doesn't line up with those two screws. But now you have pressure holding down on top of the shunt resistor and this thermal pad that's underneath this brace. And that's how it'll look when you have it mounted like I'm gonna be doing vertically. If you go straight, that's how it's going to look. I'm gonna throw a sticker on top of here probably. I'll just print out an MSI sticker or something. I don't know, I'll figure it out. So let's get our back plate put back on. Aiden is here. Hi Aiden. Hi. What you doing? I'm Yeah. You're playing? Are you making your Easter egg house? Yeah. Cool. Mom got them an Easter egg house. So no. these will probably be stuck no, to the back Odell. plate. So just make sure you put this on properly. No. Again. Mom Mom's over there? Yeah. All right. How come you're not with her? Helping her? Got quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> Pay attention to this piece right here. That's for the power connectors. So it would go like this. And just make sure when you come down, you're nice and even on straight at all the holes. That way you don't move it around and move those pads. Hopefully I came down even. I find it easier just to drop them in there first because they do not stick. They're not magnet. I think they might be in aluminum or something. I don't know. And that's our back plate on. This is on completely now. Our new brackets on there. And that would be it for your GPU block. That would be it installed with that extra um, sag bracket that holds a thermal pad up against the shunt resistor, which I think is stupid. Now, at the beginning, I removed the LED strip that went here. So if you wanna put that back on, well, you can do that right now. So I seem to have misplaced that LED bar <laughs> that went there <laughs> somewhere in all this clutter. No big deal, I'm not worried about it, I'll find it. And if not, whatever, I really do not care. So at this point, guys, here, I'll just show you. 
two screws on these sides. One here, one here. Put the bar straight down the middle. There's a nice little spot where it would fit right in. Oh, uh, have the LEDs pointed toward the GPU block. That way the light could go inside of here and it will be diffused and it'll go all over the place. If you have the LEDs pointing outward, then well, that, it's gonna look dumb. You wanna point it inward. Real fast, what I mean by having the LEDs pointed towards the block, this is a bigger um, LED strip, if you hadn't noticed, than the one that goes on the GPU. If you pay attention, you'll see the LEDs on the one side of the strip. Make sure that when you do this, you put the LEDs up toward. That way the light could get diffused and bounce around all here. If you put them downward, they'll be shooting downward, 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 and nothing will go up here. And that's it guys, that's uh, putting your GPU block on with, well, pretty much everything uh, and more. So none of that's in the instructions, by the way. Mostly everything I showed in this video, I'd say 25% of it was not in the instructions. And that's it for this GPU block. At this point, all you're gonna do is plumb it in your loop. I'm really having a great time making these videos. Seriously, I've never had so much fun in my life as when I'm actually setting up the camera, the lighting and getting everything ready to make a new video for everybody out there who watches them. Hundreds of comments have been positive. And seriously, thank you. That was really nice of all of you who commented all those positive things. They make me wanna keep making these videos. So what I'm asking for is if you guys would like to help the channel. Subscribing to the channel, liking and commenting down below uh, helps get the videos you know, in the YouTube algorithm to push it out there on people. So share the videos, subscribe, like, comment, these things all help and those things are free they do not cost you a dollar they will not cost you a dime but again if you'd like to help the channel on a more personal basis in a personal way i don't understand what i said there which i think you guys understand me then definitely check out the patreon links down below check out buy me a coffee uh that's a one-time uh donation thing use the uh the amazon links if not also i'll have info down below on how you can help the channel and you can message me and maybe we could work something out where you can help the channel. I really wanna keep the channel going, but at the same time for the last almost two years now, it's been strictly out of pocket. And at this point, I really have no other upgrades to do for myself. So I'm gonna start doing some other videos, still be on PC stuff, but it just won't be what I've been doing as much. I'll still try to do some builds here and there, but it's probably gonna be like uh, testing things with therm for thermal paste. Just some corny videos other YouTubers have done. I'm just gonna put my own twist on it. So again, guys, like, subscribe, uh, comment on these videos. Thank you to everybody out there who's helped the channel across the last year, year and a half. I really do appreciate it. And on the next video, I think we'll probably be doing, well, probably updating Polybius completely at that point. Yeah. So if you want to see the things we'll be updating, check out the playlist, uh, check out the channel, and you'll see everything there. And I will see you guys on the next video. Late. Mm -hmm.